because we've seen crypto thrive in this well somewhat stable economy right mm -hmm. for the past 12 years but now when we're talking about hyperinflation more money printing so on and so on how is that going to affect crypto how is bitcoin going to be able to survive that i mean ultimately we we all know it, well let me back that up you would have to have your head buried in the sand to not understand that inflation is here and it has been here for a while right oh yeah and so so there, there's no denying that this has been happening actually let me uh let me share my screen miguel would you please yes let me know when you got that clicked over there you got that yep we're good so so here look at this chart guys so 1971 cost of living i just want to kind of go over this now mind you this was 50 years ago okay and i i do understand that as time goes on things are going to get more expensive but let's be real let's be fair it is because of inflation okay so let's just look at how crazy it's got right living new house twenty five thousand two hundred dollars side note can't even hardly buy a car for that now average income ten thousand six hundred and twenty two dollars per year guys that's less than a thousand dollars a month you would be well below what's the poverty line miguel like uh sixteen thousand or something like that i think something around there Give yeah or take something right around there a new car, $3,560. Listen, they want more money than that down right now. So so <laughs> $3,560 is not happening for a car. Average rent, $150 per month. Listen, I've got a mortgage at this point, but let me just throw this out there. $150. Listen, when I when I was renting, you know, 20, 18, 15 years ago, you were lucky to find rent for less than $750 right now everyone's telling me that rent is 1500 plus that's a 10x yeah. tuition to harvard 2600 per year we don't have to go through all of them a movie ticket a dollar 50 gasoline 40 cents per gallon and a postage stamp eight cents and then we get into the food i mean guys here, here here's the fact so you can click off there uh you can click off uh, yeah those prices here's were a long long time ago yeah those were a long time ago but the the reality is like how far can this be pushed? And so I guess I'll, I'll throw it at you, Miguel. Where where does it end? Because we are at a point right now where average home price way up, gas prices way up, right? Every single thing that is that basically one affects the other is up. So where does it stop? Where are we headed? What what do you got for us? Uh, when it stops, nobody knows, right? That's that's the magic thing the magical thing about this system is we never know and all we hear is you know quantitative easing and everything is under control no uh inflation is just transitory right we hear these words over and over and then it, <laughs> it, 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 it comforts people right but even the people handling the situation they don't know when it's going to stop because all they're trying to do is kick the can down the line so that another generation of of leaders or whatever are the ones responsible when the when the whole thing you know goes belly up uh, so there's there's no real way of saying how or when it can stop but the more money printing happens the faster we escalate to that end point my problem is all right, we kick the can down the road. All right, let's let's say that that one uh, administration wants to kick the can down the road to the next, and they want to kick it down to the next. All of that, okay. But mm -hmm. what are we ultimately doing? We are passing a massively, like like a massively overinflated amount of debt down to our children. Yep. You know, I had a daughter thirteen weeks ago, and now all of a sudden, life's not about me. And what I think about, and why I think why it makes me even more upset, is I'm saying, you know what? We are setting our country up for failure and we're on the brink of a collapse because we continue to kick that can down the road. We continue to just say, you know what? Let the next person worry about it. You know, back in the day, Miguel, a little story time real quick. I used to have a saying and the saying was worry about it later. OK, and what that what, what that ultimately meant was exactly that. Like, I'm not going to worry about this right now. I'm going to worry about it later. But that worry about it later mentality was nothing but a problem because guess what? Later shows up. Later became now at some point. And I think we're at the point right now where I, I like to compare it to Jenga. Uh, the wrong block's about to be pulled. And uh, and this thing is gonna this thing is gonna topple. And I'm I'm just worried about what it's gonna do to the economy as a whole. Um, and you know, crypto with it. How how do you think it's gonna affect the crypto markets, Miguel? Do you first of all, do you are you uh, 
are you do you believe that this is transitory or do you believe uh something else like what what are your thoughts on inflation right now I definitely don't believe it's transitory, right? That's the that's the spiel that they give us to keep to keep us calm, right? They they're never gonna tell you right out, hey, the the Titanic is sinking, run to the nearest boat, right? To the nearest lifeboat. They're gonna tell you, hey, everything's under control. We're on the Titanic. This is the best boat possible, and you know we got the best captain on here, and everything is smooth sailing, no worries. But they know, oh, <laughs> we're taking on water. And, and it's coming in fast. Uh, so uh, it's not going to be transitory. It's definitely going to hit a point where it's going, it's it's going to collapse. I mean, you can only print so much money. You can only create so much debt on top of debt, on top of debt, that it comes to a point where, um, what's the term that they use on Wolf on Wall Street? The, the, the chickens come to roost and, uh, you know, it, it's going to be time to pay the piper and debts are going to be called and you're going to be like, wait, I, I don't got that money. I got to borrow more money to pay that loan off or at least pay off the interest. And then, you know, an escalation of loans happen. Then we talk about money contractions. Then, you know, people start defaulting on loans. And then that's when, the, you know, this domino effect starts happening. One bank can't pay another bank and then it's just end. Right? Everything just falls yeah. apart. 